All right, so I've applied a wash coat of finish of um, the shellac to Michael Fath's mandolin. Um, this is blonde when I'm making him. I'm also making him a, a black cherry one. <coughs> um, so when I apply the wash coat, it's not necessarily the final thing before I start the French polishing. I actually will do a couple um, wash coats and then what I'll do is I'll then look at it again because sometimes the wash coat helps make the grain kind of pop or you can kind of see things that need a little more sanding. So, um, so far I think it looks pretty good. Um, I'll just also rub my hand on it. Sometimes it'll raise the grain a little bit, but it shouldn't be much since you're just mixing the shellac and either, um, you know, pure grain alcohol or denatured alcohol. Um, so the tricky thing with doing like a blonde style mandolin is, you know, I have like an ebony cap here and then ebony fingerboard and ebony headstock. So when you're sanding, um, it can be tough and you kind of chase your tail trying to keep the ebony from smearing onto the blonde maple. So something I do to help with that or reduce that is I'll kind of do a wash coat of shellac, kind of go over it, and then um, that kind of helps seal in any of the ebony particles. Um, and then I'll go back and sand something with like 400 grit sandpaper, nothing uh, too aggressive at all, and any kind of black ebony dust remaining. Sand that with 400 grit, and then I'll go over with shellac again and kind of keep doing that alternating pattern back and forth. Um, so, like I said, I'm just going to do a few more passes of shellac, just have the pipette, and it goes on this little pad, and I just kind of go back and forth, just kind of building a, a layer base coat, just kind of watching it kind of gas off as I go, kind of move pretty quick. If you go too slowly, it's just going to, the pad's going to just kind of stick and then that's going to be pretty lame because it'll probably leave some fuzz or lent or a weird little spot that you then have to go scuff sand out. So I'll do that for a few more passes and then I'll probably hang it up and not look at it for a few hours. Sometimes that's the best thing to do is like, when you've been looking at it for the same thing for hours and hours, you're just, you're just, you know, you go cross-eyed. So sometimes it's best to step away and get a fresh perspective. So, all right, onward.